Hello YouTube, my name is Daniel and welcome back to another Android series. In this series we will be developing a photo notes app using Jetpack Compose and Room Database. So in this app we can search for notes, create notes, add photos to them, edit them and delete them. So I'll just run for a quick demo. So to search a note we can use the search bar here and this will search the title and also the body of the note. So if I just search new, and we can see only this note appears. And if I just search test, see that all the notes are appearing. When we click onto a note, we go into the note detail screen where we have the image at the top, the title, the date it was created, and then also the body of the note. The note can also be edited from this icon here. From here, we can change the photo by clicking this icon, change the title, and also the body. So if I just update this to test two, and new note two, and I can also change photo. This just opens up the user's photo gallery. We can select a photo here. Hit select. And we can see that photo is loaded into the view. And if we hit the save icon, you can see if we, we have gone back to the detail page and the note has now been saved. If I then navigate back to the list, we can see the note has been updated with the new photo and also the new body. We can delete a note by doing a long click on the actual item and then selecting yes on this dialog. We can also delete all notes by clicking this trash can icon up here and then selecting. So now we have deleted all the notes and we just get a empty status. If we want to add a note, we can click the fab icon down here and give the note a title. So new note title and then the body, new note body and then hit save. And we can see our new note has been created. We can then go ahead and update it I hit an edit and adding an image. So if we want this image here, hit select. And we can see that image has been added to the note. Now if we hit save, go back to the list, we can see it has been added in at the end of this note item. And we can also add photos whilst creating the note as well. So when we hit the add note button, we can see the fab icon here has changed to a camera. We can click that. Then we can go ahead and add a photo. We see that photo comes in straight away. Then we can just add title and then a body. And then hit save in the top right hand corner. And that is our new note created. The list here is ordered in the date that it was created. So you will have the newest notes appearing at the top of the list. And we also have the section headers. And these are used just to separate the notes out into different days. So you'll have all of your notes that were created today in one section and all the notes that were created yesterday in another section. So now I'm going to go over to Android Studio and start building this project. So firstly, you want to create a blank Android Jetpack Compose project. And the first thing you want to do is go into your build.gradle and make sure you copy across everything that I have in my build.gradle files. So firstly, the project Gradle file and then the module Gradle file. So you want to make sure we have all the exact same plugins, um, the exact same compose options and also the exact same dependencies. So probably best just to copy across the whole file. Um, the next thing is the theme style. Just make sure this is copied. It's just a little style to update the status bar color. And then the other thing is to also copy across all of the drawables. So we have the camera icon um, and a load of other icons in here as well. You don't need the uh, launcher background or the launcher foreground, but if you just copy across the other icons, that'd be great as well. And in the Android manifest, you just want to um, set this permission here for read external storage, as we will be reading the photo files from the user's gallery. So the first thing we're going to get started on is the note model. So this is the model class that we'll be using throughout our app and it will contain all the details for our notes. 
So if you right click on the main project directory, select new package, and we'll call this package model. Inside this package, we will have a Kotlin data class, which will be called note. And as we're using room database, we want to annotate this with at entity. And this means that this data class will create a table in our room database. The table name for this will be a, will be a constant value, which I will create in a second. So just put in constants dot table name, and then we want to provide an indices array. And this is how we can provide our index for our table. So our index will be the ID value. And we're going to set this to unique true. So we want the ID values of our notes to all be unique. So we can't get duplicate notes. First value in our notes table will be the primary key, which will be the ID for the note. So at primary key, auto generate set to true because we want the IDs to be auto generated. We do not want to provide it in the constructor when we're creating the note. Now we put the value in, so val ID, this would be type int and it can be nullable. Now we can go ahead and create the rest of our columns. The first column will be the note body. This will be called note. And what we can do is we can copy this another um, four times for the other values. First one will be note, the next will be title, the next will be date updated. And the final one will be image URI. For the note, this will be a type string. And this value can't be nullable. We do want it provided for every note created. Next will be the title, which will also be a string. The date updated will also be a string. And if this is not provided, we will use a function called get date created. We'll create that function in a moment. And then the image URI will also be a string. And this can be nullable, as we may not have images in our notes. So now let's create that function, get date creators. This won't take any parameters, and it will return a string. And this is going to create a date string for the time the note was created or updated. And we will return local date time dot now, so the current time. Then we are going to format it using the date time formatter. And then we will provide a pattern. And the pattern will be year, year, year. month and then day followed by the hours minutes and seconds so this will provide a nice readable date which we can display in our list and also in our create and detail pages now we are going to go ahead and create that constants file so on the main package right click new and select Kotlin class slash file. This will be called constants. And we want this to be a Kotlin object. And our first value will be table name. And this will just be notes. This will be a string. If we go back to the note file and just import constants, and we can see the value is now being used. Next, we can start on creating our room database. So before we do this, we want to create a application class, which will run as soon as the app has been created. And this will be used to get an instance of our application context, which we can then use to create our room database. So we want to right click on the main package and create a new class, and this will be called Photo Notes app. This class will extend the application class. 
And first we want to initialize a variable. We will call this db. And this will be the instance of our db. And that is going to be called notes database. We will create this later. And we're going to initialize this as null. Then in the initialize block, we want to set another value called instance to this. And then we will declare a function to retrieve our DB. This will be retrieved in our main activity. We can just call this get DB. This won't take any parameters and it will return an instance of our notes database. And all we are going to do to check is if db is not equal to null, return that db instance. Otherwise, db equals room dot database builder. Provide the instance dot application context then our notes db which will be notes database class dot java this will be all created after creating this class and we can provide the database name and this will go ahead and create our database. We then want to use the fallback to destructive migration method. So this wouldn't normally be used in production, but essentially what it does is if, is if some values change in your notes table or any other tables and you haven't provided a migration, it will fall back to destructive migration which means they will essentially delete the tables, delete any data within the tables, and then restart the database. So yeah, I wouldn't recommend it for production apps, but it's perfectly reasonable to use it in our scenario. We can then call .build. And once that's been built, we can then return our DB. Once we've done that method, we then want to declare our companion object which will hold our instance. So that'll be private var instance. That will be photo notes app equals null. And this is initialized in the init block, which I mentioned earlier. And inside the companion object, we also want to add some other methods. The first one will be get DAO, and this will provide our notes database DAO objects which will have our methods for retrieving, updating and deleting notes. This will be called notes DAO. And this will return instance dot get db dot notes DAO. And the last method in this class will be used for getting um, URI permission for the photos that the user chooses. And this is because we need to get permission to retrieve that URI um, when the activity relaunches, as this permission can be revoked. This will take a single parameter, which will be a URI. And in order to grant this permission, we need to access our instance and then the application context, content resolver. And then we have a method called take persistable URI permission. So once we get permission for this URI, it will then be persisted and we can retain our access to that photo. We pass in the URI and then a flag, which is intent dot flag grant read URI permission. And that is that method completed. 
we can now go ahead and create our notes database and also our notes DAO. We just want to add another value in our constants for the database name. So that'll be const val database name. And we can just call this notes database. If we go back to our photo notes application class, we can see the database name value is now being used. So to create our DB, right click on our main project and select new package. And we will call this persistence. Inside this package, we want to create a new class. A new Kotlin class, notes database. We can also go ahead and create our notes DAO, which will be a new interface called notes DAO. For our notes database, this will be an abstract class. And inside that, we need to have a method for retrieving our DAO, which will just be notes DAO. And that will return the notes DAO. We need to annotate this with at database and provide a version number of one. If you make any changes um, to the notes table, probably best to increment this as well. So if you add any further values to the note object, just make sure you go into the database class and just increment this version. Next, we need to provide our entities. These are the classes that will be used in our database. We only have one of those, which is our notes class. So that is note class. And then we just need to import notes. And that is all we need for our database. Now we can go back to our photo notes app and import the notes DB and the notes DAO. And this class also needs to extend room database. And that should resolve that error. We can just get rid of this import here. So that is it for this video, guys. In the next video, we'll be creating our notes DAO methods for deleting, updating, and creating notes. And we'll also be creating the notes view model. All of the code for this project is already on my GitHub. So I'll post a link to that in the description. If you have any questions, please post them down in the comments. Please like the video and please subscribe.